What we do here is go back, 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 back. One of the most received ideas about chefs is that we tend to work very long hours, and it's true, we do. Not only are the hours long, but the work we do is hard and potentially dangerous. There's a reason why the kitchen is the place you need to get out of if you can't take the heat. There's fire, sharp things, heavy things, hot things, and most things you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are at least two of all of those things. Uh, we don't need to see that either. It's stressful and hard because time is always of the essence. The short amount of time to deliver people their food because you people can't be patient when it's busy. Uh. The right amount of time to cook things and the long amount of time to stay chained to your station, be it a stove or a table. So when I'm working those long hours, I tend to do a lot of number crunching in my head, mostly because I get paid by the hour, so I tend to count them. I thought it might be helpful to give you a perspective on what long hours actually mean to break down my current tour of duty, the Culinary Mercenary Tour 2017. For the purpose of this experiment, we'll be looking at a four week period and counting hours per week at the end of every week. First week started out simple and I got most of my days off during this time. I worked the 16th and 17th at a catering company, which had me go to Mississauga for 6 a.m. And I got the 17th off, and I started working brunch on the 18th and 19th at an undisclosed restaurant. More about the undisclosed part later. That's when I started my gig at Marigold and Onions Camp, where I worked Monday and had my shift canceled on Tuesday, which I got paid for. Ching ching. I went back to Marigold and Onions on Wednesday, then to the Food Dudes on Thursday, and Marigold and Onions on Friday, then back to brunch at the undisclosed location on Saturday and Sunday. This week seems a little long it's because I'm counting a few extra days to round south to Sunday. So do it. It's my list. I took Monday off, but this would be the last day off in the entirety of the tour. Back to Marigold and Onions on Tuesday to Friday, where I worked four days and managed to rack up 40 hours. And then back to brunch on the weekend to round out the week. Right about now is where the wheels fall off. I work at Marigold and Onions five days of the week, which rounds out to be about 10 hours a day. Back to brunch on the weekend. Because at this point, I quit working at the brunch job. It wasn't necessarily about the hours. I mean, it was rough, but whatever. Um, there was a whole slew of other problems. Um, namely, one of the big ones was, was that this place started making me serve packaged holidays. I have standards, so I quit the brunch, brunch place. And due to my fact that I don't speak negatively about anything, they just don't get mentioned here, because I don't work there anymore. Brings us to the last week, Monday to Friday, December 15th, where I will work straight through, and as a big finale, work an extra event gig on Friday night until 9.30pm on the food dudes, just because I'm absolutely insane. All in all, over a 30 day period, I worked a total of 224 hours, an average of about 56 hours a week or on average about 7.5 hours per day, seven days a week. That's every single day of the week cooking food for people for money. Now, some of you are saying, wow, that's a lot of work, but other chefs are probably scoffing at it. When I took this on, I figured my schedule would be lighter than when I was a head chef at a restaurant. You know what? I was right. 
When I was working as a head chef of a restaurant, I would work 50 to 60 hours per week regularly. And that wasn't even during the holidays. There's a lot of chefs out there who do the same. We spend a lot of time away from our families and our friends. We sacrifice our social life in pursuit of our passion. And after a while, there's no more friends, no more family. It's just about the food. <laughs>